Today we'll be painting a simple snowman character using Clip Studio Paint Pro. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using a canvas that is 1920 by 1080. That's just because it happened to fit nicely on the tablet that I was painting on, which was the Wacom One. I've pre-selected a color gamut mask using blue and gold as my primary colors. And I'm gonna go ahead and just start sketching with a pencil here. I wanna sketch three circular shapes to create my snowman sketch. And this can just be kind of a rough sketch. I'll decide where I want my arms to be and just sketch those in. And I may wanna create some contours on the snow as well to help me understand how the snow is formed. That'll help me shade this later. I want the snow to look a little bit irregular, so I'm gonna create kind of a lump on the side of the face and then decide where I want the eyes and the nose to be placed. Now I'll create a new layer. And because my workspace is kind of crowded on this smaller screen, I'm gonna to go to the window menu, workspace, and I'm gonna change my workspace to the illustration preset. That'll rearrange everything and just give me a bit more room to work with on the screen. I prefer to have my layers in the bottom right, so I'll put them there. And I may just close a few extra panels that I don't need open. And while I'm at it, I might as well just move my color gamut mask here to fill some of that empty space. And then I can hold alt to sample one of those blue colors. I also wanna show my color sliders and I'll go ahead and make those visible in addition to my color picker. And I wanna set the color sliders to HSV. That way I can change the value very easily here. And I wanna go ahead and make sure that I'm naming my layers. So I'm gonna call that sketch layer sketch. The layer above it that I created, I'm going to name BG, that's short for background. And I'm going to go ahead and just fill with a light blue color. And then I'm going to reduce the opacity of the sketch layer a bit. I'll go back to the background layer. I'll create a layer above it, I'll call it head. And then beneath that, I'll create a couple more layers for torso and abdomen. And I'll create a couple more layers above the head for arm, foreground, nose, and eyes. Now I'll go to that head layer and I can go ahead and select the paintbrush. I'm gonna be painting with oil paint. I'm gonna be painting the light side of the snowman, so I wanna select kind of a warm yellowish color here. Let's try something like this. So that's the hue we'll be painting with, but I can, of course, play with some of these sliders here as well, like the value slider. I'm gonna go with a more yellowish hue and I'll make it very bright so we have kind of a cream color. I'll go ahead and fill in the head with that. A medium-sized brush will make it easier to paint in that head with a nice smooth edge. I'll go to the torso layer and I'll fill in something on the torso layer that looks the same, only bigger. And notice that I'm not doing perfectly round balls. I'm making them a little bit irregular because that's how snowmen are. Go to the abdomen layer and I'll fill that in. Note that it's flat on the bottom because it's kind of sunken into the snow. Next, I'll go ahead and select the arm foreground layer. And then I want a brown color, so I'll go ahead and select this dull red color and I'll just adjust it a little bit. I'll want to paint with a finer brush so I can hold down Control and Alt and drag my brush to resize it. I'm also gonna zoom in a bit here so I can see this arm more clearly. And it's at kind of a weird angle for me to draw at, so I'm even going to rotate the canvas to put it at a more comfortable angle. Now I can go ahead and fill this in. I want it to be kind of thick and thin at the same time, so it looks like a branch. So I'm going over it a few times and painting on it making sure that I thicken it up kind of near the base of the branch and make it thinner near the opposite end. I can have some other little forking things that come off, but I don't want it to be too elaborate. Go ahead and hold spacebar and pan over to the other arm. I'll need to, of course, rotate to a more comfortable angle for that arm and select the correct layer, which is the arm background layer. This is on a separate layer because it goes behind the snowman's body and any layers that overlap should overlap in the correct order as you would see them in real life. So I'm doing the same thing, I'm just painting over it repeatedly to kind of build it up, making the far ends sharper and more tapered, and the end that's sticking into the snowman is thicker. I'm gonna to go to the nose layer now and I'll go ahead and fill in the nose. I want an orange color for that. Typically I'm doing kind of the mid-tones first and then I'm adding highlights and shadows to them later. So I want kind of a mid-tone orange color. You can feel free to experiment with different colors and tweak the colors until you're happy with what you get. I think something like that works for now. I'm gonna rotate the canvas again so I have a more comfortable angle for drawing my nose. And I'll just draw in kind of a cone shape here. I think I want it to be thinner than I made it in the sketch, so I didn't follow my sketch exactly there. I'm gonna go to the eyes layer now. I'll go ahead and just sample that color I used for the arms, because I want just a dark color for now. The eye that's on the far side, I want to be kind of more tall and oblong, and the one that's closer, I want to be more round to give a sense of perspective. I'll go ahead and reset the view of my canvas now. 
Next, I'm gonna fill in some of those snowball shapes, but I don't wanna be painting outside of the snowball shape on the background, so I'm gonna use a trick found in most art applications called lock transparency. So I'll select the torso layer, and up here at the top, I'll click on lock transparent pixels. Now if I sample a different color, maybe something that's a lot lighter, and I paint on the torso with the oil brush, then I can kind of use lighter pressure to blend in that paint, and I get a nice highlight. You'll notice that I'm not able to paint on the background because I'm locking the transparent pixels. So I'm gonna do that for all the other layers that I plan to paint on as well. I'll go ahead and paint in some of that highlight on the head layer as well. I'm putting in these highlights on the top right, that's where the light's coming from. So just think of this as a ball that you would shade with the light pointing on the top right. It would fade out as it goes toward the bottom left. Now I'm gonna sample a color from my gamut. I want a kind of desaturated blue color like this. I'll apply some of that paint, and if I use heavier pressure, I'll apply more paint, and if I use lighter pressure, I won't apply as much, and it'll kind of blend more with the paint that I'm painting into. I wanna fade those colors together gradually. And don't worry about painting with yellow and blue, because when you paint digitally with yellow and blue, it does not make green, it just makes gray. And that's okay for what we wanna do here. So I'm just continuing adding that shading to the torso layer, and the head layer as well. You'll notice I added a bit of a shadow where the snowballs overlap as well. Now I'm being intentionally loose with this painting because I want it to look kind of like a quick loose style, but also because this is just a demonstration that I'm doing as I'm reviewing a tablet and I don't plan to spend much time on it. I'm gonna go to the background layer now and add in some background details. We know there's gonna be a bit of a shadow cast here on the opposite side of the light. I could add in a little bit more detail on the ground there too. I'm gonna think about where I want my horizon to be and put in the sky and have that kind of fade down. It could be darker at the top, lighter at the bottom. This could be trees in the background, just a sky. I'm not really sure at this point. So I might put in some little blobs here and there that could be clouds or trees, and I'll come back to this later. I'm painting behind my gamut mask too, but if you wanted to, you could temporarily hide that so you can see what's behind it. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more saturation and value and just add in some more of this to the background to create some little shadows and depressions in the snow. I'll make my brush finer and I'll put in some finer little details in the snow here. I'm just being kind of loose and spontaneous. Now at this point, I don't really need the sketch anymore, so I'm gonna go ahead and hide that sketch layer. Now I'm gonna select kind of a darker orange color and I'm gonna use that to create a shadow on the side of the nose layer. Now I'll choose a lighter orange color and I'll use it to add a highlight to the nose. Next I'll select a deep indigo color and I'll use that to fill in the eyes. Then I'll sample the background color and I'll use that to create a little spot of highlight on the eyes as well. Might also be good to put a little spot of warmth on the eyes. Now I'll choose kind of a lighter brown and I'll use that to put some highlights on the background arm. For the other arm I'm gonna choose an indigo color and make it a bit darker. Since that's on the shadow side I just wanna add a shadow to it. I wanna make sure I'm painting onto the arm foreground layer. Next, I wanna add some highlights to the background, so I'm gonna sample one of those light yellow colors. I'll just use kind of a medium brush on the background layer in between those shadows and not covering all of the blue to add in some highlighted areas. These are areas that are maybe pointed more toward the sun. I also wanna use it to kind of sharpen up that horizon line, and the position of that horizon line determines the height of the snowman or the angle that we're viewing the snowman at. Next, I'll select just pure white, and I'll go ahead and use that to go over some of those highlighted areas just to lighten them up a bit more. If I don't use heavy pressure, then this really just kind of lightens the paint underneath. I can use that in the sky as well. And then we get this nice combination of warm and cool colors and then some neutral colors when we mix the two. Now this gamut mask is kind of getting in the way, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hide it for now. We can add in some more to the background here. Now I'll return to the abdomen layer, and I'm gonna add a darker shadow to the far edge and the bottom. And then I can kind of blend the color out using lighter pressure. I wanna create a little bit of contrast between the torso and the abdomen, and I can do that by using just a little bit of that shadow color. Now I wanna repeat that process on the torso and head layers, just darkening that back shadow a bit more. Next I'll sample one of the lighter warm shadow colors, and I'll make the eyes look sunken into the head. While I'm at it, I'll also add a cast shadow on the nose. Now I wanna darken some of that cast shadow that the snowman is creating on the ground. So I'll go back to the background layer. I wanna make sure I'm choosing a darker color here and I'll put in some of that. And then I'll select the blend tool and the fingertip preset. 
and I'll do a little bit of blending. Now my goal here as I'm blending is to soften the background and create some detail or transitions and colors, but I don't want to over blend, so I want to leave some of the sharp details alone. I wasn't 100% happy with the sky area, so I went ahead and just blended that out and I'll add in some more detail using the oil brush. I'm gonna select a blue-gray color and I'm gonna add in some tree details in the background. These can still be pretty simple. Next, I'll sample that lighter yellow color and I'll use that to add some highlights on the trees. Again, I'm keeping this very, very simple because I want it to look far away. I'll also add some lighter, warmer blue near the horizon. And maybe even some of that lighter yellow color as well near the horizon. Next, I'll use that color to lighten near the base of the trees to create a little bit of mist and a sense of distance. Then I'll return to the Blender tool and I'll blend with a soothing watercolor preset, which is kind of a more wet looking blender. That really helps to set a lot of that stuff back into the distance. Next, I'll add an almost white yellow color to the background, and I'll use that to sharpen the edge of the snow in front of the distant trees, as well as add some contour to the snow. And I'll switch back to my blender and I'll blend to smooth some of those colors together. I do want to keep a little bit of sharpness here and there. This is really something you have to kind of judge by eye because I want it to look distant, but at the same time, I don't want it to be too soft. Now the snowman shading is a bit too harsh, so we can blend some of those layers using the soothing watercolor to kind of smooth them out, starting with the abdomen and then I'll move on to the other layers. It's up to you to decide how much you want to blend this stuff. It certainly would look fine if you kept it looser and didn't blend as much. Next, I'll add a little bit of shadow surrounding the eyes just to help those look more sunken in. Then I'll use a smaller blender to smooth the edges of those darker shadows I put in earlier, just because they're a bit too harsh. Next, I'll return to the oil brush and I'm going to sample that light yellow color. I'm going to use that with a finer brush to add some subtle tree trunks in the background. If you like, you can do some dark ones as well. Then I'm going to blend the sky a bit more with a bigger blender because I want to smooth it out. I decided that I'm not going to have a forest back there or a bunch of clouds. I want it to be a little bit softer and less distinct. I'm going to go back to my oil brush now and I'm going to sharpen the edge of the plane that's in front of the trees. Next, I'll select the airbrush tool and the soft preset. Then I'm going to sample that shadow color and I'll kind of make the sky darker on the top and fade it down. I'm going to use that same airbrush to create some mist in the background using that lighter yellow color. I want to overdo it though, so I might make my brush a bit smaller and just use light pressure right on the horizon there and just have it kind of fade down into the foreground. Next, I'll select the blender tool and I'm going to smooth out the midground a little bit. Might even soften the horizon too, but not too much. I just want it to look kind of like distant snow blowing around. Next, I'll disable lock transparency for the head, torso, and abdomen layers so that I can blend the edges of those layers. This step is optional, but blending the edges gives it kind of a loose painterly look. I have the edges really sharp, which is a little bit unnatural and doesn't fit the rest of the style. But again, it's up to you as an artist to decide what works for your painting. I'm also going to blend the edges of the nose and the eye layers. You want to make sure that transparency is not locked for those layers. I want to blend the edges of the arm layers as well. And be careful not to overdo it because you can completely wreck all the detail that you painted in. I just want to kind of mess it up a little bit so it looks like a real traditional brush that kind of smudged a little bit by accident. Now I'm going to zoom out on my canvas to evaluate how it looks. I think it's coming together. I'm going to crop out some of the excess background. I don't think I need all that. I think that's looking much better. I see one more little edge I want to blend here. And then now I want to go ahead and create a layer above the other layers for snow and we'll have some falling snow. I'm going to select the oil paint brush and I'm going to paint short strokes of white snow. These can be of varied shapes and sizes. You probably want to take your time with this and spend a bit more time than I'm going to spend here. But I'm just showing you for example sake how to do it. You'd want different layers of snow and snow that's small and snow that's large. You might even have some snow that looks like it's in motion. You could even have snow that follows kind of a contour or a direction so it looks like it's blowing around. And you could change the angle of all the different snowflakes to make it look like there's wind blowing it in one particular direction. 
Next, I'll turn lock transparency on for that snow layer, and I'm going to vary the color of the snow using warmer highlights and cooler shadows. So basically, I don't want all the snowflakes to be just plain white. I want some of them to be lighter or darker. The airbrush can be very effective. If I use that to darken some of them, you can see that now it looks a little bit more realistic. I can add in some of that yellowish color where they're catching sunlight, and where they're in the shadows being blocked by the snowman, I can make them darker. You'll also want to consider the contrast in your painting. If you want the snowflakes to show up on top of a similar color, then they need to either be lighter or darker than that underlying color, so you may want to darken them or lighten them accordingly, like I did there on the snowman's chest. Next I'll create a new layer above the snow layer for some more snow that'll be built up on the snowman. I'm going to go ahead and use a smaller brush here, and I'll put in something with the oil brush, not the airbrush. And then just imagine since snow is falling, maybe the snowman's been here for a little while and the snow is starting to collect on his nose and the rest of his body. And then of course you can sample a shadow color from the snowman's body and use it for the edge of the snow there. You can even add a little bit of highlight if you like. Now it's kind of hard to see the highlight on the snow because the background snow is also pretty light. So I'm gonna to go to the background and use the airbrush to just paint in a shadow right there. And that will add some contrast to those two colors and help the light stand out. Next I'll return to the nose layer and I'm going to go ahead and sample that base nose color. I'm just gonna make it a bit darker to create an edge shadow. While I'm at it, I can also add some form and texture to the carrot. I can also select a lighter color and I can add some details. I'm going to sample the sky color now and add some outline to the snow on the nose to create contrast. I'm going to use white to add some snow that's kind of building up on top of the snowman, and this is maybe a bit brighter and shinier because it's fresher snow. But I meant to do this on a separate layer and I didn't. I think I accidentally did it on the nose layer, so I'll have to deal with that later. I'm also kind of just adding a little bit of contrast maybe to the edges of some of the layers, like the torso for example. I'll do that on the correct layer this time. Now I'll bring back my color gamut mask, but I did crop it, so it's actually way off to the right. I'll need to just take it and move it over. Next I'll sample a blue color, like this. And I'll use it to create kind of a reflected light effect on the edges of the shadows on the snowman body. I'll also use that color to add some shadow underneath the nose. And I'll add some shadow where the body sections overlap. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some snow buildup on the arms so I don't forget those. I'll have it warmer on the light side and cooler on the shadow side. I'll also add some of that blue shadow to the nose. Then I'll go ahead and blend some of these shadows using soothing watercolor. I'm going to show my gamut mask again and I'm going to add a brighter orange to the nose to help that stand out more. I'm going to select a darker red and I'll use that for a shadow on the nose. Might also erase from some of that snow that's on the nose, because I feel like it's just a bit too much. Next I'll sample a magenta color, and I'm going to use the airbrush to tint the top part of the sky, to add a little bit more flavor to it, and involve some more of these colors that are in my gamut here. I'll use that same color to tint the shadow areas of the background and my snowman. Then I'll go ahead and just clean up some of the background by painting with the oil brush, and then blending a little bit with the blending tool, I'm really just kind of trying to add some more visual interest to the background and have it look a little less sloppy. It also gives me an opportunity to clean up my shadow. If I'm not happy with the angle of my shadow, I can clean that up as well. In the wintertime, the sun's usually a lot lower, so just keep that in mind when you're doing cast shadows. I'm also going to blend that shadow where the body sections overlap, just to smooth that out a bit. I feel like there's a bit too much snow in the background, so I'm just going to kind of chisel away at that with the eraser to knock it back a bit. I might eventually add in more snow, but for now I think this looks better. I also want to add an impression from the arm in the torso using a darker blue color, so it looks like the arm is kind of stuck in there. Then I'll sample the warmer color here, and I'll add a highlight on the edge. And I'd say at this point it's finished enough for demonstration purposes. I was able to test the tablet that I was working on. And so here's the result I got in approximately 40 minutes. If you wanted, you could keep adding to it. I added maybe five or 10 more minutes to it, added a little bit more snow and sharpened up a couple of details. And this is what I got. If you'd like to watch the real-time version of this painting process without any time lapsing, become a member of my YouTube channel. And if you're new to this channel, check out some of my other digital art tutorials. 
Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.